So this wasn't a video that I was planning on uploading on the channel, but officially the summer transfer window has closed and the Sounders made a big whopping zero signings in this window. And I believe set an MLS record for being the first ever MLS club to not make any signings in the summer transfer window for three straight years. Not a record we necessarily want to be Holding And there's many fans that are upset, have discourse about this when it comes to Craig Weibel, the organization, the ambition of the club. So I thought we do a video talking about all these topics, giving you all my thoughts. And most importantly, you guys got to give me your thoughts in the comments down below. This video is going to be completely raw, unedited. So I do apologize about that, but I wanted to get this out ASAP before the League's Cup match against LAFC, which as well, I might do a double upload where my original plan was doing a video talking about both the cup matches against LAFC, talking about how we've been playing really good in these cup competitions and we got to win those games. So if you guys do see a second upload, it's going to be talking about that. But in regards to this video, the more discussion-based discourse video about the Sounders and their transfer business, the lack of roster moves, incoming, outgoing transfers. It's really frustrating as a Sounders fan to go three straight summer transfer windows. And for you all that might not understand, why is it so important summer transfer window? Because the summer transfer window essentially, yes, it's a transfer window in the middle of the MLS season, but is the main transfer window for all the leagues around the world because this is their off season. So this is where most players are available. Players make more transfers, more moves during the off season. It's not as common to make a move midway through the season for the most part. With so many available players, options, you'd think the Sounders would go in for some players, but on the contrary, it's not a problem more of money. I want to make that very clear is we have money. That's not the big issue at hand. It's more of we don't have much cap space. And that is kind of what is hindering us in regards to making more bigger moves and kind of constraining us to not being able to cash out and deal out more money because of the MLS roster rules, which I, to a certain degree, understand but it can very much be confusing and the big talking point was with craig he said which i think was very ironic i didn't watch his full press conference maybe that could be a fun video that i do where i watch it from start to finish with you all raw reaction i've just seen quotes and clips from reporters talking about the main stuff that he spoke about he first opened up and said this was a very exhausting the most exhausting transfer window he has ever experienced which i think is super ironic and funny because he didn't make any signings because he claims he made a lot of calls tried to make a lot of pushes to get a deal over the line and i think that was with the availability of javier ariaga's like spot i'm not exactly sure what kind of contract he filled up but again it's only like a small amount of money that he had to use and kind of like my biggest gripe with the whole thing is is he would go on saying like i tried to make deals we couldn't get him over the line and you know for me that kind of just implicates either we just didn't have enough space nor money we wanted to put in to make the deals happen or the players were not interested in coming here or you didn't do a good enough job and getting the deal over the line. I think it's one of those three. It's not like, oh, we were just unlucky. That's not how transfer business works. I mean, it's it's very cut and dry. Those are pretty much the three main things that probably occurred. And Craig kept emphasizing he tried to make deals happen. They didn't happen. And I just think, what are you, like, how is that even possible? If you, It was so exhausting. It seemed like you were on the phone 24-7 trying to make calls happen, and you couldn't get maybe a deal over the line. I want to say, too, like, I don't want us to just make a signing to make a signing. I do agree we should, you know, make a smart signing. But for the fact we haven't bought anybody in the last couple of summer transfer windows, fans are going to start getting impatient, which, yeah, it's not entirely his fault because I don't think he was a part of one of those transfer windows. And I think he brought up, too, that he said, like, I wasn't a part of one of those transfer windows because this question was brought up, how he ha there hasn't been any signings the last three summer transfer windows. And he's like, 
well, you guys got to talk about Garth about that one. I was like, well, buddy, you're still a part of two thirds of it, though. To constantly bring up the point of we don't have enough cap space, like it, it's partially Craig's fault. Like, let's not act like he doesn't have a role to play in it. He renewed a fair amount of players' contracts. Stephen Fry, uh, Christian Roldan, Jordan Morris, knew who. I think there's probably a couple more as well on that list. And that was your decision. You wanted to stick with those players. You wanted to give them more money, put Christian Roldan and Jordan Morris on max TAM deals. Like if you're going to do that, then you're going to hinder yourself on making signings. That's my biggest problem is, is we are so sensitive to not just being willing to be you know, cutthroat and just let players go. I want Craig to put his stamp on this team. And I think he's very scared of actually doing that, make taking risks, being ambitious. And, and as well, that comes down to the organization because the fact that Craig wasn't given that much money to work with, I definitely think Adrian Hanauer, I mean, fans are as well, putting the pitchforks out for him as well. I don't think it's just Craig. I think he plays a big part in it, but the organization... The lack of ambition and eagerness to try to go for players. So many teams in this summer transfer window in particular too have been so ambitious. I mean, we saw Chicago Fire straight up terminate Jordan Shakiri's contract. That takes balls because he was like the fourth or fifth highest paid player. So to terminate his deal was a big shell out for the fire and basically to admit, yeah, we kind of dropped the ball on that deal. It wasn't a good move, but they had the balls to be like, you know what, we're going to terminate it and then go try to find someone to fill that hole. And that's kind of another part that fans maybe wanted to see with Raul because he's the highest paid player on the team and he barely plays. He's had his bust up problems and it would be great if we had his DP contract space available. We would have a big wiggle room to at least make a big splash in the striker position, for example. And then maybe as well, like Charlotte, they were going after like Miguel Almiron. They were going after Stangs from Feyenoord, like some really big, high quality players in Europe. Granted, yes, they didn't go over the line, but at least they were attempting, trying to be ambitious to bolster their squad. They still made some really good signings nonetheless, but like every team in the league is trying to make their imprint, trying to improve their team. Every team is getting better, but we're just still stuck in 2021, which is one of the big problems fans have is like, how long are we going to keep sticking with this team? I mean, I've been saying it for many, many videos. Fans didn't really like to hear that. Back when I was saying that back in 2023 last season, or even at the end of 2022. I mean, this has probably been some of the more rougher seasons for us because, I mean, we missed the playoffs for the first time in 2022, which granted we won CCL. That definitely covered up a lot of that, but Missing the playoffs is a pretty big L. 2023, yes, we finished second in the West, but like we we were limping a little bit in that regular season. It was so like up, then really far down, then a little bit back up, and we got bounced out in the in the first round. Essentially, we lost all of our big games that year, and this year started off really really slow. I think things have picked up a bit more, and there's a little bit more intrigue with certain players, but. The reality is, if we don't actually see some legitimate change, like be it in the coaching department, and again, these are all, I'm not saying each thing, I, I'm not saying like we, we have to sack Brian, we have to get rid of this player, but there needs to be some sort of change, you know, be it with the coach, be it with the tactics, be it with the personnel. Like we can't just keep hoping and praying out if we hit good form, like the Sounders are back. Like we have seen that this team has a lot of deficiencies in many positions and tactics and how we play. It's very stale sometimes. Yes, there are some good moments, but so far we've seen for the majority of the time, there's a lot of bad moments that we don't want to see and big deficiencies with certain players, be it Raul, be it with Rusnak, be it with Morris, be it with Christian Roldan, be it with Jao Paulo, Stefan Fry, whoever it may be. And plus as well, this team is aging. Like our team for the most part is pretty old in those core positions. I don't think we necessarily need to have like a full-blown young squad, but the main guys on this team, their legs are gone for the most part. Like they're pretty cooked. We need to start making changes. And I was hoping these last like two transfer windows, three transfer windows, we would start just making some change. I think we made the most in in the recent offseason transfer window, but all those signings maybe outside of Bell have been not that productive or beneficial to the starting 11. I mean, Usofsky, pretty much like an Eber 2.0. Nathan has pretty much been injured. Pedro has pretty much been injured. And I know it's not their fault, so they've been injured, but at the end of the day, 
one of the best abilities you can have as a player is availability. And if they're not available, it doesn't help us at all. And I think for the most part, Craig is like taking so many L's with his decisions he's made. I mean, he's been so stagnant with his decisions. He hasn't made an actual imprint, actually, you know, been ambitious, been cutthroat. I just, as I just used those words, he hasn't been any of those things. Kind of like what Garth was back when he was with us. Like, yeah, we had players like Chad Barrett who were great super subs for us in his era when he was here. But when he started seeing the wheels just fall at that little bit, Loggery did not hesitate to be like, yeah, you know what? We don't really need you anymore. See you later. Let's free up the space. Let's get someone new in. And that's kind of what I want to see with this team and with from Craig Weibel. And a lot of his answers were just, we don't have enough cap space. And I'm like, dude, well then just stop renewing so many players' contracts and just let some players walk. But then there was this, very surprising thing because it seemed like with some of his answers he was saying well, we'll have more dp spots open come the end of this season this and that and it kind of just seemed like it implied most likely we're going to get rui diaz and rusnak to just walk not renew their deals but then someone asked a question so are we not going to be renewing their deals you're basically saying they're pretty much done at the end of the season no he's saying they're already talking to them about renewing their deals and i'm just like what are you doing you just complained two seconds ago we don't have enough cap space but the two players that take two-thirds of the big wages two-thirds of the dp slots that honestly most fans are cool with letting go you're still talking about renewing their deals and let's be a hundred percent honest people want to say yeah i would take maybe raul on a tam deal or a lesser contract i take roof sack on a lesser contract do you really think they are not going to try to negotiate themselves to continue on a dp contract like let's be honest here no one wants to take a pay cut realistically with raul he shouldn't even be making a TAM deal. He should be closer to like Freddie Montero's amount of money he was making, which was pretty much the league minimum. Do you think Raul's going to go from three mil to like a hundred some thousand? No, he's not going to take that. We have to let players like Raul, Rusnak. I know Rusnak's having a better year. He's having a way better year than his previous seasons, which I think helps a lot because he's actually playing his true number 10 position and he's having that free roll. He's an out and out starter. He doesn't have to compete with Nico and that really helps him out a lot. But in this modern age of MLS, Rusnak is not a DP level player and he's also in his thirties. He's not going to get that much better. I think we'd be better off to just let him walk and find someone else. I mean, we're seeing Charlotte going after some of the best players in the air divisi, for God's sakes. A guy that was leading the league in assists. That's the type of players we need to be going for. Those great young South American talents like Gabriel Peck for the LA Galaxy or, or Painsill, who came from the Belgian Pro League. Like, those are the type of players we need to be going for. Not renewing players like Rusnak that are on the decline like they're not gonna get better they're not dp level players in modern mls so i was so surprised that he said oh we're already in talks with rui diaz rusnak jao paulo to renewing their deal so are we just never gonna let any player go we're just gonna renew everybody's contract and if we're gonna let anyone go just let them out on loan like the squad needs to free up cap space we need to start letting go of players, letting them walk. It is okay to let them walk. I know we won CCL with these guys, but CCL was almost three years ago now. And we can see that this team has so many deficiencies and the fact that we weren't able to take any risks on getting any players or taking any risks of letting any players go, that just shows lack of ambition, a huge lack of ambition from this club, the organization from Craig that... We don't want to make any signs. We don't want to let any players go. Fans are frustrated about that. They're incredibly, incredibly fed up. And that is why we are seeing attendance drop massively season after season because fans don't want to keep going to games, renewing their season tickets when they're jacking up the prices just for the team to be the exact same. In my opinion, Craig Weibel is doing fans a huge dishonor. The fact that we are not making any signings, we're not selling any players, there are no in-going, outgoing transfers, nothing major going on in the club, and expecting fans to show up to games, to renew season tickets when prices are just going up, and it's the same exact team. Like, why would you want to do that? And with a 2025 FIFA Club World Cup coming up, that is possibly going to be one of the biggest moments 
for American soccer to have an MLS representative in us, the Seattle Sounders, to play against some of the best teams in Europe to go in with this type of squad that has not bolstered at all for almost three years is such a big dishonor to the fans because this is such a big and proud moment for us to see our local club actually compete in a, not a friendly, in a major tournament that actually matters against the likes of like Inter, Benefico, Real Madrid, the best teams in South America, like, why would you not try to prepare or build or bolster a squad, not necessarily to enter Miami's type of level, but at least to a level to compete in that tournament? Because we do not have a squad that is at all able to compete in that tournament. We're barely competing in MLS. Imagine how much we're going to get cooked if we're going to continue with this type of dry, stale, same old type of team. There needs to be some freshness just a little bit i'm not asking for a complete starting 11 turnover but do something it's like that meme with the guy in the stick do something that is what we're fed up with like i just want to see something happen like i get it if you have you know contract constraints let players walk and let players go have the cojones to be like you know what i'm just not renewing raul Ruiz diaz he's not played that well he's highest earner he's had bust ups with brian schmetzer there is no reason to keep him we'll give him his ceremony to say goodbye that's the end of it rusnak he's a good player he had a good year but he's not a dp level player in mls i could probably trust myself and my scouting team to find someone to fill that hole that is younger and could add something different to this team or i'm willing to let go of new who and Alex. Alex Roldan, who are internationals for El Salvador and Cameroon, get big bucks off of them and maybe bolster in other positions. Like, just come on, man. Do something. Be ambitious. You know, show that you're going to actually do something. Words are so cheap. Actions speak louder than words. Like, he has done nothing. Like, he has taken so many L's with his decisions. Renewing players' contracts that maybe shouldn't have been renewed. Not letting go of Liao Chu when we had some really good offers coming for him. The players he has brought in from Eber, Musovsky, absolute dud strikers. Like he has taken so many L's. So I know this ended up being like a very big rant, but it was something that I know probably a lot of you are feeling with the club, especially with the management, with their lack of ambition. It doesn't just all come down to Weibel. Yes, he's a big part. He's he's the general manager for the team, but as well, the ownership, Adrian Hanauer. It just seems like since we won CCL, you know, we've completed it. We've kind of just been like, it's okay. We don't need to invest in this team anymore. They are going to be fine. We'll just keep playing out the same players until they're 50 years old. That's just how it feels. And fans are really upset about it. I'm upset about it. I've wanted us to start making some changes for at least two seasons now, but we're really, really buckling down on this next upcoming off-season transfer window to make something happen. And it's a huge risk that we're playing. Hopefully in an ideal world, we'll have two free DP spots. It's gonna be tough to fill up two DP spots because as well, MLS off-season is still the midway point through the European season. So you're gonna have a bit of slim pickings to choose from. Maybe we let go of some players on those TAM deals. We let go of Liao Chu. Maybe we let go of Nuhu. Maybe we let go of... Alex Roldan, we don't renew a few contracts. We let go of Musovsky, whatever it may be. Maybe we get a big offer for Obed Vargas. I don't know. I don't want us to just keep sticking with this team. I want us to actually make some serious change because in my opinion, if we just keep this up, the Sounders are going to constantly be getting passed by and we're just going to become like a low tier, very low tier, just getting in the playoff team. We're not one of the top teams in the West. I don't even think we're one of the top four teams in the West anymore. Yes, we finish in the top half, but if you watch us play day in, day out, it doesn't feel like it. We don't compete in these big games. I mean, we're definitely not one of the top teams in the East. The Eastern Conference is stacked. We do not, we are not a shadow behind any of the Eastern Conference teams. We are super far behind them, but I just want to see some sort of positive change. I think there were some good positive changes in the previous window. I don't think it was enough, but I think the main things are we need to sell players. If you want availability, you want more flexibility, more money to work with, you got to let players go. You got to let players walk. You got to take deals when you you see some decent money coming in for them. Got to take some risks. I don't want us to keep playing this very steady, stagnant route. I'm just making a few so small signings here and there. 
I want us to actually make like a big splash. What happened to the team that was ambitious back in 2013, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, buying players like Clint Dempsey, Obafemi Morans, Nicholas Ladero, Rowery Diaz, being that ambitious club, being the difference makers in MLS. When we signed Clint Dempsey, that was such a big deal. Like that's like the, I don't know, I don't want to say messy type of deal, but it's like that Giroud type of deal like LAFC just had. LAFC as well are going for Griezmann as well, which I... In an ideal world, I'd love for him to come to Seattle. I mean, we've seen all the posts with how he loves the Mariners because of a certain player on the team. I forget his name, but like, why don't we go for him? Like, why don't we use that as pulling power to make something happen? We have the money. We can pull off getting Griezmann. It's just up to the ownership if they want to fork it out and we have a DP spot open. It's up to us. The cards are in our hands. It just depends on how we want to play the cards. And that is a video that I have in the works that I'm working on right now. My ideal transfer window for the Seattle Sounders. There's going to be a whole skit involved in it. Giving you all positions that we need to look for, get signings in, and players we need to let go of. It, it's going to be a bit of a controversial video in regards to not everyone's going to love it. Some people might love certain things. Some people might not love other things about it. But boys and girls, make sure to like this video. I'm extremely tired. It's super late, but I wanted to make this video for you all. And maybe some of the stuff I said doesn't make sense, but I'm just really trying to use my last brain cells. Put the Get this video out. I'm As you can tell, I'm already falling asleep. But yeah, make sure to smash the like button on today's video. Subscribe if you're not subscribed already. And I hope you all have a lovely day. Okay.